Hello and welcome to Gamset Bytes, a series of quick videos where I'll share with you some free uh, tips and tricks on how to tackle those nasty Gamset Section 3 questions. So let's start with uh, an organic chemistry style question. All right. So here we're given a reaction sequence. Uh, this is called a Diels Alder reaction, and you don't need to remember this, but from what we're given here, uh, you can see that our first uh, product here, okay, uh, this is a diene, so it's got two double bonds, um, and they're alternating, so it's a double bond, single bond, double bond. And our second reactant is an ethene, and in this case, it's also substituted, so it's got something um, attached to the side. Um, and then we've got our product, and our product is a cyclohexene. The important thing is just to follow where the carbons end up and also um, what bonds are formed and what bonds are broken. And to help us to visualize what's actually going on uh, in terms of a pattern, and it's important to, um, to, to do this with a lot of organic chemistry style questions because that's the fastest way uh, to actually do these yeah, under time conditions. Um, I'm going to just highlight the backbones. Okay, so it's clear where they get incorporated into the product. Okay, so there we go. So that's where they end up in the product. Okay, so we've got our red backbone and we've got our green backbone. And hopefully you notice that um, the double bonds on the original reactants go away. So they disappear. Okay, and a new bond is formed here. Okay, so that new bond is actually formed on the original diene, the, the first reactant, or at least in that backbone, and it's between the two middle carbons. And really, that's all you need to know to be able to solve the next problem that I'm going to show you. Okay, so here we have a new problem. We've got two reactants, and we're asked what is the final product going to be? Now, the first thing that we want to do is identify which one is the diene and which one is the ethene, okay? Uh, and sometimes it can be, um, it could be on purpose or, or not, but it, it can be a bit confusing as to which one is which. Uh, you might be forgiven to think that this is the diene because it kind of has the same shape. Okay, so if you recall in the first page, the diene was like this. Okay, and, and this is kind of like a C shape, but actually it's not. Okay, so that's, that's the wrong one. That's actually the ethene. The diene is here. Okay, the diene is here, and it's somewhat hidden because it's incorporated into a ring structure. Okay, so I'm going to highlight the backbones again, just so that we can um, relate it back to what we talked about before in terms of the pattern. So that's the backbone of the diene. Okay, and that's the backbone of the ethene. And those are the two pieces that essentially are going to join together to form your cyclohexene. Uh, uh, we also know that the double bond should be broken or should go away um, in both cases. And a new bond should be formed here between these two carbons. And in fact, if we just look at this pattern itself, that's actually going to be enough to solve this question, believe it or not. Okay, so let's have a look. Okay, we need to have a look at the carbon. Yeah, I'm going to highlight it blue here. We need to look for the carbon that's attached to the methyl group, as well as the carbon that's incorporated into this ring, and look for a double bond between the two. Okay, so that's one way we can uh, have a look at the uh, the answers and deduce what the answer is. So if we look at option A, 
this carbon is the one attached to the CH3, and obviously there is no double bond on either side of it. So straight away, we know that it's not going to be the right answer. Okay? And if we looked at option D, we can discount that for the same reason. Okay, if you look at this carbon, which has the methyl group, there are no double bonds on either side. Okay, so we can discount that. If we look at option B, that's the carbon that has the methyl group attached to it. And indeed, it does have a double bond attached to that carbon, which is incorporated into a ring. However, there's, there's a problem with this. Um, the carbon or, or the bond, um, the other double bond that's present in this molecule shouldn't be there. That should have gone away. Okay, so that should have gone away. Another reason why this is uh, not a particularly good answer is the fact that this carbon actually has oops, this carbon actually has one, two, three, four, five double bonds, and carbon should have a maximum of four. Okay, so we know that this is incorrect, and that leaves us with C, which is the answer. And normally you don't have to check, but we'll just do this for uh, completeness sake. So here we go, we've got your carbon that's attached to the methyl group. The double bond is present, and that's also attached to a carbon which is incorporated into the ring structure. And so, so thanks for watching, and um, if you would like to see more of these videos, uh, please uh, check out my Facebook page. Um, just search Barry's Tutoring uh, and give me a like or follow. And yeah, hopefully I'll be posting more videos soon. Okay, thank you. Bye.